on Midlife Midweek Rambling. We're going to be talking about all things menopausal, dry, vagina. We're going to touch on five topics, cleansing, moisturizing, repair, restore, lubrication, and exercise. So go and get yourself a nice cup of tea and join me now. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for joining me again. My name is Amanda. This is the Midlife Midweek Ramble, where I talk about all things to do with midlife, menopause, exercise, nutrition, and then a few of the things I think might be of interest to you. This is the fourth episode. I'm super happy that you're here with me. Today, I've just got another cup of tea. Honestly, I'm so predictable. This is Yorkshire tea, best tea in the world. I'm sorry, you can't argue about that with me. It simply is wonderful. Um, I feel like I need it today because we've been hit in Toronto with one of the worst snowstorms I've seen in ages Um, and it feels really good to be like snuggled up inside. Um, Let me just show you. I mean it looks really beautiful but honestly I'd rather be inside than outside so I'm going to light a fire and watch some telly later today and just completely relax. Okay. This week on this episode, I'm going to talk about all things dry vagina, and I'm going to dig deep into that because I feel like this is one of them topics that's very confusing. And so I'm going to talk about um, the reasons we get dry vagina, or the correct name is the GSM. We'll go into that in a little bit more detail um, and what you can do about it. And this is based on what the medical consensus is and then what I use personally, and I'm going to show you some products, and then hopefully that will really help you with your own choice. Um, but first of all, I want to talk to you about two podcasts that I was on this week that might be of interest to you. I always like to share this ad mini bit to start with because, you know, it may be of interest. Now, the first one is called Cut the Crap Podcast with Matt and Beth. Now, oh my God, they're crazy. Beth especially kills me on Instagram. She's so funny, a little bit sweary, like myself, more sweary than me, actually. Um, but really funny, but really solid, solid information. Now, they had me on the podcast and it was an absolute scream. Oh my goodness, but really good, really good. And um, I think you'll find it really informative. We do talk about menopause, of course, um, but within the context of the work that they do, the work that they see, how they've been like blocked by people on Instagram simply for asking people to share the data, to, you know, keep them informed with, you know, where they've got their information from. And, you know, when you challenge somebody like on Instagram like that and they block you, it's a huge red flag. And so we had the whole red flag conversation and that leads on to the second podcast, which is with the doctors who you may have seen on Instagram called Dr. Spencer Nodolsky and his brother, Carl Nadolsky. Carl is an endocrinologist. He has quite a lot of specialty with female hormones. Spencer is an obesity medicine doctor. And they're really funny, but they're cute because they're like bros. So we had this conversation and my friend Abby Langer joined us and it was really good. And the reason that we did this together is because for a year or so now, the four of us have like a little Instagram chat group and we call it the Quack Watch. And what we do is as soon as we see something from our respective positions in the health and wellness industry, you know, Abby's a registered dietitian, they're both doctors, I'm patient advocate customer type thing um, with a personal trainer and a nutrition sort of background. Well, we go into this group and we talk it through and it's been really helpful for me because there's some things I clearly don't understand. And there's some things I feel just don't feel right. And I can never quite put my finger on it. And we talk these things through and we look at the latest research. And so essentially, we had a podcast about that. So it's the first time I actually have ever got to speak to Spencer and Carl, like in real life on video, because it's not real life, but sort of, oh my God, it was good. It was funny. It was good. I hope you like it. So the links to both of those podcasts will be in the show notes. Okay, let's get going talking about dry vagina. Now, I'm calling it dry vagina just because it's easier to talk about it that way, but let's talk about what it really is. So it's been called vaginal atrophy in the past. We've heard that term vaginal atrophy. The correct term for the changes that go into our whole pelvic region in menopause is called genitourinary symptoms of menopause or GSM. And here's what happens. 
as our estrogen starts to decline, the whole integrity of the pelvic floor region, so our vagina, our vulva, around our perineum and anus, our clitoris hood, all of those things can be affected by the estrogen declining from a muscular standpoint and from a collagen standpoint. It's like the integrity changes. And I once spoke to a doctor and she said, imagine a jam donut with all the jam squeezed out. It's sort of that that happens. And how that can present to menopausal women depends on you individually. So it might be that you get reoccurring UTIs or vaginal infections or yeast infections. You may see it show up that way. It might be that you're very dry and itchy or maybe there's some pain down there that doesn't make sense. Maybe the tissues have got thinner or it just looks different. Maybe it's receded slightly because that can happen too. Maybe there's some swelling that doesn't make sense or it also could be things like um, tearing or ripping or super painful sex. I mean, these sound quite extreme, but honestly, these things happen to women and they happen a lot. Statistically, it's considered that most women will get some type of a GSM symptom throughout her postmenopausal lifetime. Another symptom of GSM through um, menopause is incontinence. And that can show up as urging continence, stress incontinence, or a combination of both. So urging continence is, you know, when you go to put the key in the door and you put the key in the door and you're trying to turn it and you're thinking, oh my God, I'm going to pee myself. I'm going to pee myself. It's that psychological feeling of not being able to get there in time. We've all experienced that, right? Stress incontinence is considered jumping on a trampoline. You're bouncing on a trampoline and you can't do it. You just pee yourself. And, and, and obviously you can have a combination of both. It's really important for you to know that any type of incontinence is pretty common, but it's not normal and it's fixable. And I think if you know that it's fixable, it can be a game changer because I know many women that struggle with incontinence and it stops them doing things. It stops them having sex because they think they can smell the urine. It stops them participating in sports or dancing or playing with the kids. And, and it can be really life altering. And so if you're a woman who's experiencing any of the symptoms I've told you, I want you to know that there's treatment options out there. A good friend of mine, Dr. Kelly Casperson, who is a urologist, actually sees many women who turn up with GSM. Now, what she's saying is a lot of women don't come and see her until they're in their 60s, older. And the problem is, is if you turn up to the doctor later and some of this um, integrity in the pelvic floor region has already started to be impacted, it may be irreversible. You really need to be proactive with your care. Now, I hope that hasn't scared you too much. It really is trying to be factual. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about some products that I use and some things that are recommended by the menopause societies that hopefully will be helpful to you. So there are five things we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about cleansing. We're going to talk about moisturizing. We're going to talk about prevention and restoration. They come under the same thing. We're going to talk about lube. Lube. We're allowed to use lube. And then the last one is exercise. So let's get started. So how many times have you been in the local supermarket or been in the local chemist pharmacy and seen vaginal washes or douches, they're sometimes called, that are targeted to us in the way that maybe we smell too much and we need to restore the flora in our in our vagina it's so predatory it's just really really gross but here's the thing through menopause the whole ph level within our vagina changes completely changes and it be, can become irritated really really easily so you need to stay away from using anything that's perfumed and actually even just some bars of soap can be too irritating for that whole pelvic floor area and one of the recommendations that Dr. Jen Gunter gives in her vaginal bible book and her menopause man manifesto is CeraVe and there's also a couple of other cleansers out there that fall under the same category. So CeraVe is um, 
a cleanser developed by a dermatologist. Don't they all say that? But it cleanses without forming and it doesn't have a smell. And it's the type of cream that when I use on my face, it's what I use as a cleanser for my face. You can put it up, say if you put it on your face and you can rub it right into your eyes and get all your mascara off because it doesn't sting. So for cleansing, consider using just water or something very simple like a CeraVe cleanser. Now these aren't super expensive, but this is probably like $12, maybe 10 pounds, something along those lines. And it lasts forever. And actually my whole family uses this for everything, for cleaning our face, our body, and I use it for cleaning my vagina and vulva. So nice and simple for the first one use a simple cleanser. Okay, let's talk about moisturizers. Again, you want to be really careful what you're using down there. So when you moisturize, you're talking about the labia, the outside area. The vagina is the inside area. So the vulva and the labia and all of that area can become very, very dry. And if you sort of consider the fact that we take care of our face um, and our neck and all of our like skin around here, because we feel as though we see the skin changing as we age and go through menopause where you sort of want to take the same type of care when you look after your whole vulva area and so one of the recommendations for moisturizing is to use something with a hyaluronic acid included in the ingredients hyaluronic acid is one of the um, elements in our skin that starts to sort of lose we lose some of that and so um, I actually use and I don't have any on me but I can you know just pause here I used to use a face hyaluronic acid on my vulva and it still lasted a long time and so I used to use La Roche Posay I like their products it's French French makes me think it's nice I don't know. Um, and I would just put a couple of drops of this serum and then rub it on the inside of my labia. And honestly, it made such a difference because I used to itch and scratch and it would drive me crazy. I have a product to show you here that I got. I've been working with Naomi Watts on her stripes team and they gifted me these. So there's no kickback for me on this. Um, and I got a bag of goodies and they were literally like three things that I really, really liked. And I've got more of them at the moment. They're not available in Canada, but they will be soon. So this one is a moisturizer and I'm hoping I can get you to see this. That's called the Vag of Honor. It is a pretty brilliant name for a moisturizing product, I think so. And the main ingredient is ectonine and it is a highly effective moisturizer. And this says here, Vag of Honor, ectoine hydrating and revitalizing gel. One of the funny things I think about these products is, look how small the writing is. It was one of the feedbacks I gave them. I'm like, we're menopausal women. I literally like need a magnifying glass to read this. But let me just show you what the product is like. And I'm telling you, this is so nice. I would probably use this on my face. So I love these containers. They're recyclable um, and just beautiful to look at, right? So let's just squirt this out. You only need one or two squirts. I just use one and you can see it's like a serum and it goes a long way. Look how much um, coverage you get from just one squirt. I mean, I could do both hands with that. So you can see that one pump is clearly enough um, for the vaginal area. Now, how often do I use a moisturizer? Well, I'm in the situation where I don't need to do something every day. And I would recommend that you find a routine that works for you. So what it looks like for me is I wash every day with a CeraVe. And if I go in the bath, I don't use it. You know, so if I go in the shower, sometimes water's enough. Moisturizer, maybe two or three times a week tops. That seems to be enough to help me find what works for you, but be careful from um, products that have got high perfume content in them because you really don't want that. That may cause an irritation. So now let's go on to the repair and restore. And this is going to be the game changer for you. And this is something that's recommended by every single menopause organization globally. And that's vaginal localized estrogen. Right, so this comes in many forms and I'm just going to show you a couple of products here. Now, depending on what country you're in, it depends on what the prescription looks like because this is prescription only. Please do not get off the shelf 
products that contain estrogen or wild yams. Get this from your your healthcare provider. It's relatively cheap. I think um, in the US, this would cost me six dollars, and it's free for me in Canada. But I do have insurance. So this, as you see, is estrogen vaginal cream, and the Canadian brand that I have is Estragine. And this is Estron Vaginal Cream, and it's 0.1%. And then this is one that is almost at the end I got from the US, and this is called Estrace, and this is an estradiol, and this is, again, 0.1%. Vaginal cream is something that is not contradicted if you cannot take hormone therapy. So breast cancer survivors, you should speak to your doctor about this because this is not contraindicated and you should be able to use it. Now, let's have a little word of warning because I've had some experience with estrogen cream that might be interesting to you. So what do you do with it and how much do you use is definitely up to you and definitely speak to your healthcare provider about this. It comes out as a little cream and I'll only put a little bit on just so you can see, little estrogen cream there. And you don't need very much. And you need to put this on wherever you have problem areas. And because this is the cream, you can apply it to around the clitoris. And you can also apply it to where the opening of the vagina is, that small little V-ship, which often gets very, very sore and tight, especially during sex. And again, this is easily absorbed. And the reason that this is um, safe for um, all women, and it's not contraindicated, is because... This stays localized. It stays within the vaginal area. It's not systemic. And what it does is it restores estrogen back into the area. And most women will find that when they start using this there, it helps with their any sort of UTIs that they're having, vaginal um, irritations, painful sex. It can take a few weeks to work. Um, how often you use it is um, depending on the you know the consultation with your doctor I figured because I'd started using it I should use it every day and unfortunately I had a bit of a bad reaction and it swelled up I called it a super vagina I had a super vagina which nobody wants it almost like it's almost like putting the jam back in your donut it restores integrity there um I looked like a baboon it wasn't fun and I learned my lesson. And so I use the amount I showed on my hand to you there two times a week. And it's been a game changer two times a week, sometimes one time a week. And the reason is, is because I've introduced something else that I'm going to talk to you about now. Now, the cream is really handy for getting into specific places, you know, because you can apply it to wherever is valid for you. But there are other products that you can get from your healthcare provider that just literally stay within the vaginal walls and release um, estrogen into the whole area. One of them is a ring. You can get a ring. It's about this big. And I'll actually put a, put a picture of it here. And you pop it right up towards the top of your um, cervix. And it stays there and it slowly releases um, estrogen into the, the vaginal area. I had one of those once and I didn't have a good, this isn't a video about me not having a good time with products, but I didn't have a good time with that. I was doing a deadlift. It was a particular heavy deadlift. I was driving my feet into the floor and I stood up as, you know, as fiercely as I could and the intradominal pressure pushed down and the ring flew out. So there you go. So I didn't use the ring. It wasn't very successful for me, but I do understand that it is very successful for most women. So that's a consideration too, again, usually covered by your insurance on the National Health Service, um, Canada Health, all the, diff all the different health services. Another product that you could consider using is a tablet. Now, here is my prescription for this. It's called Vagifem. And Vagifem is um, an estradiol vaginal tablet that you insert. And again, it has the same type of properties as the ring. It slowly releases within the vaginal walls, but it does stay localized still. Um, and as you can see, they come in individual tablets and with an insert that you just pop it up. It's almost identical to using a tampon. Now, I really like Vagifem, actually. And for the longest time, I used one Vagifem 
tablet a week. My prescription actually just says um, use twice a week or as needed. And as needed for me was once a week. So I'd use this once a week and then twice a week I would use the cream in the particular problem areas. And that was perfect, perfect for me. So consider asking your doctors about that. But because I am quite sensitive to estrogen and I sometimes don't feel great using it, I actually was given another prescription. And so now I have something else into the mix and um, I sort of rotate them. And my doctor's okay with that, but you don't need to have all the products. It's just because I've just been trying to find the best thing for me. But this is a product that's fairly new on the market in Canada. It's only been out for about three months, I think. It's been available for the longest time in the USA, and I'm not sure where else it's available um, throughout the world. And it's, um, a, it's a product called Prasterone. And Prasterone is DHEA, which is something you may have heard of. And you can buy these um, tablets that are DHEA, and I would recommend you not do those other uh, tablets that you take because this one is actually FDA approved, Canada Health approved, etc. And you would maybe use this uh, one or two times a week. It's a vaginal insert as well. And what DHEA does is it um, converts to testosterone and estrogen within your localized area. So again, it's brilliant for vaginal health, but there's a tiny little bit of chance that it will co convert to testosterone. And they have to say it like that because everybody converts hormones differently. And so it may help if you have um, low libido. It's sort of indicated for that. Um, I don't know if it helps with low libido um, because... I haven't used it for that. I've used it more for the, my just whole vaginal health. But this is a, I love this. This is my favorite product of them all because I don't ever have the tingly reaction that I do to estrogen. This is the product that actually feels the best for me. And um, I will probably continue using this. And when it got released by Health Canada, I thought it was like, whoop, 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 because it had been over a year since I used it. So something you can ask your doctor about. Okay, so you know how to cleanse, you know how to moisturize if you need to do that, and you know how to use the uh, vaginal products. And you have to stay on top of GSM symptoms, so it's okay to continue using them. Okay, so let's talk about the final two things, lubrication and exercise. Okay, so again, when I worked with Naomi Watts with her Stripes team, they provided this product to me, and it's called Oh My Glide. Oh my glide. Again, the names are brilliant. And they've called this play oil. Now, I think we need to get over the taboo of using lubrication to have sex. I think in the past it may have been like a little bit of a shameful taboo topic, but it's super, super important and it's going to make sex more enjoyable for you. And um, it's going to stop any pain that women are having. And I know that happens all the time. Um, Things like KY jelly are really not the most appropriate thing for you. They can cause a ton of irritation and I would highly recommend that you do not use them. Um, so this one is called Oh My Glide, like I said. I haven't actually used this yet and I'm telling you I haven't used this yet because my sex life is crap at the moment and we're not gonna talk about that today, but I just need you to know that let's keep this real. Um, we have our ups and downs and mine's in the down, mine's in the doldrums at the moment. Okay. So this play oil is a lubricant that is actually oil based. This is what the product looks like. And I've used it like on my hand and it feels lovely, smooth and silky. Now, the only thing with play oil is that if you still use a condom, if there's even a remote chance that you can get pregnant, I'd like to know how. <laughs> it's been a while since I've had to worry about that but it can destroy the integrity of the condom. So play oil should never be used with a condom. So I am actually interested in using that one, but my go-to that I've used for years and years and years is this. This is by a company called Yes. It's available on Amazon and actually potentially in some pharmacies. And this is a water-based discreet lubricant. And this is just really, really nice. It just comes out like a gel, water-based, 
and it doesn't feel slimy or greasy and it doesn't leave a residue. I just really, really like this one. And so this is a great product for you. So look for oil or water-based products. Be careful of any perfumes. I mean, the KY jelly that like and condoms that glow in the dark and um, jellies that smell and stuff, just please stay away from them and just really think about what you put in in your body and how it can impact you. So that's all the products that I have to share with you with regard to that. But the final piece of the puzzle is this. Your whole pelvic region is built up of muscle and tissue and the pelvic floor is a tissue, is a muscle that is like a sling from the front to the back of your body. So from the pubic bone all the way back to the tailbone. And when we know that muscle integrity starts to decline with menopause, it means that we need to pay attention to our pelvic floor. So as well as using a localized estrogen, consider doing pelvic floor exercises. And if you have access to a pelvic floor physiotherapist, that can be a game changer for you, especially if you're somebody that struggles with painful sex or somebody that struggles with incontinence. Typically, it can be tight muscles or muscles that aren't working appropriately. Hypotonic, meaning they're not working appropriately, or hypertonic, where they're super tight. And uh, like to give an example, I was really struggling with incontinence when I was running, and I couldn't work out why. And I started using a localized estrogen, and it made a bit of a difference, but it was still happening. So I went to a pelvic health physiotherapist, and what they do is an internal exam. I like to use my hands if you notice an internal exam, but they realized that my glutes were so hypertonic, so tight, that my heart, because they work it together, the pelvic floor works together, it was so tight that the rest of my pelvic floor couldn't contract. And so we released the glutes, and then we went through breathing exercises to help me release my pelvic floor, breathe in and breathe out. Um, and it's back to normal. And I haven't had a single incident of that in nearly five or six years. And I was struggling for a year or two. And so I would highly recommend you look into that. Um, in my book, Menopocalypse, I have a section all about, um, you know, our vaginas and incontinence and how to do pelvic health um, exercises safely, how breathing is so important. You know, I wanted to call that chapter, Let's Not Beat About the Bush. I thought that that was really funny, but you know, the publishers were like, well, it's more than just the bush we're talking about, isn't it? So anyway, so this whole dry vagina thing is a big issue. And I feel that, you know, we don't talk about it enough. And it's a real pity because the solutions to help you are super, super simple and easy. And anyway, so if you've got any questions about that, please let me know in the comments. If you have any products that you feel are safe and appropriate, and others might like to hear about please put them in the comments because that's what this channel is for for us to share and i truly appreciate you sharing that information and um yeah so that's that um and i just consider treating you know downstairs the same as treating upstairs it's just like you know something we have to do and i'm perfectly okay with that and yeah so there you go right my knitting has gone a bit slow this week i'm working well on my blue um pullover and it's now down to just be above my belly button and I'm going to show you that next week when I've done a tiny bit more but it's looking so lovely but what I did is I I was having a bit of a flat week and so I wanted to do something nice I wanted to do something that would make somebody else happy because I fed, figured if I fed into somebody else's happiness it would make me feel good so I knit this look at it isn't it just the most adorable thing you've ever seen the Bluebird of Happiness, and I was just flicking through an old magazine I had, and I saw this pattern, and I had the blue wool that I had from making the, the, the sweater that I'm making. So I made this little bluebird, and I walked to Casa Loma, which is a castle just at the top of my street, um, up the steps, and I hung the little bluebird in a tree, and I just said to someone, you know, please take me home, the Bluebird of Happiness, and, you know, hopefully this gives you a little bit of happiness. The idea of a bluebird is that it's supposed to give the recipient some joy, some luck, some happiness. And so anyway, 
it made me feel so good. And somebody found it and tagged me and just said, it literally made her day. She was having a shit day. She found it and she just was like, oh my God, thank you so much. And then I went to visit a friend's, um, a friend whose daughter is in hospital, unfortunately with cancer. She's just having the worst time. And I made her daughter a little bluebird too. And her daughter just carries it everywhere with her now. Like, oh my God, my heart, my heart. So I think it's going to be my thing. It takes me about an hour to make one. They're a piece of paste, so easy. I'm going to put the pattern down here in case you want to do it because it's very, very easy. You just need a few different techniques to sort of pull it together. And it's a very clever construction. You make the neck to the tail and you leave the tail open and then you pick up stitches and do the head. So then you have the whole thing with a hole in the end and you just stuff it pull the tail nice and tight you've got your bluebird it's so cute and anyway you know it's my meditation it's my calming thing and I love to just knit and make things and so now I'm gonna do bluebirds everywhere so Toronto watch out and um yeah and a few people when I posted it said they were gonna do the same thing they asked for the pattern and so let's I'm thinking of starting this bluebird movement anyway I hope you like that so anyway guys thank you so much for joining in this week. I hope all of the vaginal stuff was helpful because honestly, when I, you know, got on top of this, it was a bit of a game changer for me. So let me know what you think. Um, don't forget to like this video, comment, please, because that's super helpful for me and subscribe and then tell your friends and then tell everybody else that you know on the street. And um, yeah, let's make this a thing that we do together. Um, thank you so much. And I will see you next week. Cheers.